uh, right from verse 16. And God saw that there was no man who was qualified. Now there has to be someone to stand in the gap. There's got to be someone who's going to be the intercessor. All right. His arm brought salvation unto him. Now, this has to be rightly interpreted. His arm meant a, a part of him had to be uh, put in a position for the sacrifice. Uh, th that's kind of also, uh, take note in uh, chapter 63, verse 5. My own arm brought salvation unto me. Now, God became the human sacrifice and allowed himself to be born of a virgin. Now, the virgin birth is really, it was prophesied by Isaiah in the seventh chapter. Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. And we know Emmanuel being interpreted is God with us. But in the ninth chapter, verse 6, how's it go? Uh, to unto us a son is given, uh, to a, a child is born, his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, Prince of Peace, and Everlasting Father. Now the son is going to be the Mighty God. So the intercessor that is spoken about in the book of Isaiah uh, chapter 59 and chapter 63 was God himself who became the arm or an extension from him that would become the son of God or the Christ who would bring salvation back to himself. The Bible says to it God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. So God became a human being and literally died. Look at 1 John. 1 John 3 and 16. Hereby perceive we the love of the Son of God. Is that what it said? No, it says hereby perceive we the love of God. Read. Because he laid down his life for us. Now where did he lay down his life for us? At Calvary's cross. God did. It didn't say the son here. It said God did. But we know that the son was God. And I like Acts the 20th chapter because Paul says about the same thing in Acts the 20th chapter uh, right at verse 28. Twenty twenty eight. Take heed therefore unto yourself and to, all the to all the church over the to feed the church of God not the son of God which he now the subject is God which he God hath purchased with his own blood is, is that Bible? alright now if there's only one God we know that it's Jesus who became again the Son of God to pay the supreme sacrifice for all humanity. So church, I want you to understand clearly that God introduced the New Testament covenant because the old covenant could not reach up to do what God intended for humanity. Not that God's covenant failed, but man failed the covenant of God and mercy and this is what grace is about mercy came in God could have said well they couldn't do it so I'm just going to wipe away humanity maybe I'll start all over again but my goodness he done that once before didn't he <laughs> with Noah all right and man still come up short so God said I'll make one more covenant and I'll pay the price myself and I'm going to take the law and put it in the inward parts the law ain't gone nowhere. It's down inside of you. If you want to follow the law, but you have to want to follow.
follow the law of God. And that's why we come to church often as we can to strengthen ourselves and strengthen each other. For saying out the summoning of yourself together for thus is the will of the Lord. So we have to come to church to be there for one another. And never, never get so discouraged until you catch yourself coming to church and sitting in the pew and getting angry. That's dangerous. Now that'll help somebody if you've got humility. Don't ever get angry at the word. Because when you get angry at the word, you're not getting angry at the preacher. The Bible says they're not, uh, uh, how's it go? Not at you. They, they, it's not that they hated you. Know that they hated me before they hated you. Words to that effect. In other words, what you're trying to do, you're trying to say, well, Lord, I don't really like your word. But <laughs> you're going to take it out on the preacher and not on God. Because you know you can't handle God. But you really can't handle his preacher. Amen. Amen. So, so don't, don't ever come uh, uh, angry and don't ever come burdened. Don't ever come depressed because you cannot receive the things of God if you're burdened and you're depressed. That is not of God. That's of the Antichrist. And learn how to accept tribulation, rejection, difficult situations, Know that everything ain't going smooth all the time. Know that sometimes you might have a vision and it might not be an exact vision that God wants for you. So don't get angry and say, well, I'm going to go ahead and do it my way anyhow. Well, you can do it your way anyhow, but it ain't going to come to nothing but naught. But if you wait on the Lord and be patient, and watch God open up a door for you. Then you can walk through with God by your side. But if you try to fight the thing and do it your way. Hey Amen. I think we got the victory. I ain't going to say nothing until later on. But I think we got a victory coming. Amen. But I'm, I'm saying this. If God calls you and tells you he wants you in that part of the vineyard to open up a church.